How many people are already enjoying the prophetic speed? Say amen. How many people are, you are sure you are, you are moving with the speed of the spirit? Come on, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Sometimes you are moving, you think you are not moving. It's because you are going very fast. I say, I see you begin to enjoy the speed of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. So today we'll continue the series talking about speed. Amen. But today we want to look at speed powered by planning. Lord, we'll receive our trans one more time. And today we'll, I'm going to try and explain some things about planning. Then I'm going to talk about, um, I'll try and express what planning is. Then we'll look at the energy behind planning. Hallelujah. So what is planning? Our text, you know, again, we always anchor what we do in New Covenant Assembly with scripture. That's the safest place to preach. You are based on scripture, then everything else is fine. What is planning? Planning is the link between your present reality and your desired future. What is planning? Planning is the link. Planning is the roadmap between your present reality and your desirable future, your glorious future. Say amen. See, that part of the future is what makes planning an aspect of the prophetic. See, because the prophetic, amongst many things it is, it also talks about the future. So once, because planning, there's a component of planning that includes the future. And anything in the future is a branch of the prophetic. So speed by the prophetic, a sub-aspect of the prophetic is planning. I see you gain speed. In the name of Jesus. I say, I say you gain speed. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 29. Luke 14, 28 to 29 in the New King James Version. Jesus speaking now. He says, which of you intending to build a tower? So you have a desire. You want to have a, a tower. Does not sit down first and count the cost. Whether he has enough to finish it. Less after he starts and lays the foundation... He's not able to finish it. All who sit begin to mock him. So immediately you see here that intention is not the same thing as planning. You can have all the good intention. It's not the same thing as planning. Planning is not the same thing as intention. Say amen. It says you are intending. So what is planning? Planning is sitting down and counting the cost. So I'm not saying you don't have a good intention. But if you stay with good intention, it means nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, if you look at that scripture very well, planning prevents mockery. <laughs> Can you see? It says, which one of you, you want to build a tower? You don't, first of all, sit down, count, plan, so that you know that you're going to finish it. Because if you don't plan, there's a possibility of starting. You see, everybody rushed to start to do foundation. They now realize that, ah, there's no more cement. It leads to mockery. So one of the ways to eliminate mockery in your life is by being a good planner. Because it ensures that you finish what you start. What is the point of laying foundation? And you're not finishing it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every abandoned project receives speed today. In fact, if you go to some countries and you see abandoned projects, it is proof that there was no planning. So abandoned project is proof, according to this scripture, any abandoned project is proof that there was lack of planning. May you begin to plan well in the name of Jesus. So planning is that link between my present reality and the future I desire. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, you see God, you know, and I think this scripture was used on Friday as well. Here is a quality of God. God says, I declare the end from the beginning. That is planning. So, planning is the ability you are standing here, but you already know the end. So, that was make planning prophetic. If you are looking for a future, ah, where is it? That future is hidden in God. 
So this is what makes planning very profound. If you truly want to plan, you can't do it outside of God because God holds the future. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may God help you see the future. And again, we don't want to, you know, I don't want to bog it down. People say, oh, I've been praying. God has not shown me anything. Many times you have a burning desire. God speaks in many ways. Are you hearing me? He puts the burden inside. You, you know, you, you just want to do it. He puts an idea inside of your heart. But any picture of a great future in front of you can't be from the devil. Say amen. Mm -mm. He doesn't do that. It's from God. So from where I am to where I want to be planning. In mathematics, we are taught that the shortest distance between two points is what? A straight line. Let me, now, here's my own definition. The shortest distance between the future you desire and where you are is planning. If you hear that quote anywhere, collect, that, collect a royalty on my behalf. The shortest distance between the future God has shown you and where you are is planning. Say amen. What is planning? Planning is a deliberate use of your time to prepare for the future you desire. Planning is not a waste of time. You know, people tend to make it look as if you are wasting time. You know, some people, they are action, they are very uh, action-oriented. Yes or no? Like that guy that started building the tower without, without gathering all the details. They just want to move. Just want to move. Or some people just think... <laughs> It's a waste of time. Well, what would be would be. What would be won't be. God can have a great destiny for a man, but refuse her to take the time. Deliberately think. Deliberately use that time to prepare. You are frustrating the grace of God. May you not do that in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Planning is a deliberate use of your time. Of my time to prepare for the future that I believe God has for you and for me. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 and 8. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. Listen to this scripture. In fact, let us read it together. I want to go. Hey. Let us read together. I want to go. And be wise. Which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, and gathers her food in harvest. What is this Bible telling you? The Bible is saying, the ant is a planner. The ant gathers food in the summer, deliberate use of time, so that the ant can survive in winter. What is planning? Planning is what you do to ensure that your future survives. Planning is your survival tool for the future ahead of you. That is what he's saying. Hallelujah. It's a deliberate use of your time. Thinking is not wasting time. My, growing up, my mom would ask me, call her, put on your thinking cap. That means I'm up, I'm up to something not very nice. <laughs> put on, sit, sit, sit down there and think. Ah, it was very difficult for me to sit still. I wanted to just call her, sit down there. Put on your thinking cap. Planning is deliberately putting on your thinking cap. Tell your, tell your neighbor, think for a change. Mm, mm. Go to the ant. Planning is done even by the smallest of animals. So anybody can do planning. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, planning is hard work. That's why people don't do it. Look, the Bible says, go to the ant. You slogan. The ant gathers food. Have you seen an ant carrying food before? I mean, let me see. Do you know that the ant can carry a load about up to 200 times? Yeah. Is it 20 times or 200 times? Even if I stick with 20 times, it's body weight. That is huge. You can't carry 20 times your body weight. Human beings, the best, 2 or 1.5. You see all those people that do snap, down, all those that carry weight, you know that? 1.5, 2 at best. But the ant, 20 times minimum. I think it's up to 200. I don't want to use the wrong figure, so let me stay with 20. That's still high. So what does that mean? Planning is heavy load. 
planning because and that's why women they will hide behind their husband they say you are the man when it comes to strategic planning and something because nobody wants to take a decision that it will go wrong women just say you are the you are the head that one they know how to delegate and say you are the head i follow you <laughs> that means that the, the, the decision is uh, it's not very clear so she will remember that she's the head <laughs> all right she will remember that he is the head and push him forward planning is heavyweight. Are you ready to do the heavy mental work? Planning is heavy thinking. Mental thinking. Hallelujah. But it prepares for the future. Genesis chapter 41, verse 25 to 36. Joseph standing in front of Pharaoh. Listen, God gave the dream. Spiritual. Joseph gave interpretation. Technical. But it takes planning practical to realize it did you hear what i said god gave the dream spiritual joseph interpreted technical skills that's interpretation if you stop at only technical skills you will teach yourself they will clap for you but you you, you will teach yourself but he gave a plan a deliberate plan in fact that was what got him the job hallelujah and I think I've preached it here. When you go for that next interview, when you look at the role, go with your 90-day plan. After they have done their interview, you produce a plan for the next, for the next 90 days, how you are going to help that role. That's why Joseph got the job. So distinguish yourself. This thing, I paid money for it. This thing, I'm telling you now, that you're looking at me like this. I paid money for it. Then I now saw it inside the Bible. I said, everything is in the Bible. This is what I paid this woman hundreds of dollars to tell me. And I've told you now, you're just smiling. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, many times what you have not yet experienced, when they are telling you, you think they, are, they think they are joking. I paid hundreds of dollars. I now saw it in the Bible. I said, Chai. For free, he's there in front of me. Don't go for that interview. Go differently. You prepare, they come up with a 90 day plan. Of how your role will add value. Once they've done their interview, you know, do you have any questions? Say, yeah, actually, here's my 90 day plan for what I'm going to deliver. I can assure you, unless they're watching this sermon, nobody else, <laughs> nobody else will add. That was how Joseph got the job because he gave a plan. What is planning? It's a deliberate use of your time to prepare for the future ahead of you. Now, pay attention to this. What is planning? Planning is your get out of jail card when there is trouble planning is the ability to outrun your present challenges <laughs> it's running ahead of the challenge let somebody say amen look at this Luke chapter 19 verse 3 to 5 Zacchaeus how many people remember the story of Zacchaeus Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus right but the guy was a short man right and there were so many people he couldn't see Jesus so what did he do? He looked, he said, you know, so he looked at the direction Jesus was going. He ran ahead, positioned himself on a tree. That is planning. That is planning. Planning is the ability to outrun your present challenges. Zacchaeus was confronted with a challenge. He couldn't see Jesus. And those people don't care about him because he's a tax collector anyway. So he, that's the opportunity to step on his leg and to say, you know, uh, it's the crowd. Say Amen. But he got out of the trouble by planning. Praise God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive grace to run ahead of the problem. Yeah. Planning, listen, in planning, we tell ourselves the truth. He looked at himself and said he's short. He, he can't grow taller. So in planning, you are, you, are, you are brutally honest. Are you listening to me? Because if you are not brutally honest with yourself, you will identify where you are. He says, you know, this is my height. This God, for whatever it is, made me forfeit, forfeit, forfeit tall. So this is not the time. He can't grow another three feet that day. These people are too many. What do I do? The ability to honestly evaluate your strength, your, where you are. And say, okay, what can I do? I can't let this circumstance hold me down. That is it. You, there's always a way out of every problem. You must realize that after you have cried, it's okay, Lord, show me the way. What do I do here? Say amen. And what did he do? He found a tree. 
and he went to wait. Planning is the ability to go into the future and position yourself there at an advantage. That is planning. Planning is that you run mentally. You are in 2021, 20, but you are already in 2030. You are there already. You, you put a position. You plan yourself to show up there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive grace. Remember, according to my definition, the shortest distance between your present reality and the future you desire is planning. Say amen. Okay, look, look at another guy that was in trouble. Luke chapter 15, verse 18 to 19. The prodigal son, right? Remember the prodigal son? He left home, wasted all of his substance. He said, man, this trouble is too much. How do I get out of this? He came up with a plan. He said, you know what? I will arise. <laughs> I will go to my father. I will say to father, I have sinned against. He came up with a plan. There is nothing you are going through. This guy was in a horrible location. Planning will dig you out of the hole. Are you hearing me? There is no hole you cannot come out of through planning. So planning is the ability not just to foresee the future, but it's the ability to find your way out of the present challenges right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, see a way out. Amen. You are not hearing me. I say in the name of Jesus, see a way out. Amen. In Jesus' name. If you are here, say I'm still here. Planning. Let me say one more thing about planning under explanation. Planning is not against faith. Because some people in their spirituality, they try to make it look as if when you are planning, you don't have faith. Or, you know, planning does not hinder the miraculous. In fact, planning facilitates the miraculous. Mark chapter 6, verse 34 to 43. Jesus trying to feed 5,000 people, right? That's the story. So, what did he say? He said, let's see, what food do we have here? What, what do we have? That is called brutal honesty in your present situation. What do we have? Five loaves, two fishes. Okay. How many people are here? Over 5,000. So what do they do? Tell them to sit down in groups. Until you really know where you are. How do you go to where you are going? People lie to themselves a lot. You know, they lie. To, you are not, uh, you, until you are sure, say, God, this is where I am. Fine, there's nothing wrong there. You are just not going to stay there. You can, be, you can say, I'm here right now, but you are not going to stay there. But planning requires me to identify why I'm, where I am right now. So he says, you know what? Okay, sit down in groups, 50s. He planned. Then the miraculous kicked in. Miraculous likes order and planning. Not chaos. Because chaos is pandemonium. And that word is from a demon, pandemon, demon, pan, you know, pan and demon. Together is pandemonium. But God likes order. Planning brings order. Say amen. You need to know, how much is the school fees? For four years. Oh God, it's $250,000. Okay, how much do you have? 50 bucks. Ah. Don't laugh, but you have, you have identified it. You can now say, God, I am looking for 245,000. You understand what I'm saying? You now have a basis to pray. Now you say, oh, God, I need school fees. I need school fees. You, have not, you are not thinking. You've not done anything. So planning helps me to direct the prayer point. This is what I have. This is what I need. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, please plan. And you know, as 2022 is coming now, we, we, we normally will preach this kind of message so that we begin to think about 2022 and begin to use our time very well. Okay, let me give you a good example where you see the prophetic and planning working together. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Second Kings 4, 1 to 7. Remember the story of that woman, the widow, that the husband had died and she went to meet Elisha and said, oh, they are coming to take my two sons. So, you will see the prophetic working with planning now. In fact, Elisha gave her a prophetic plan. He said, what do you have in the house? He said, oil. He said, okay, go and borrow vessels. Step one. Gather many of them, okay? Put it into the house, okay? Close the door, you and your sons. Planning. 
Then the prophetic kicked in with the miraculous. She started pouring the oil. Okay? So she went back to the guy and said, well, I've done that. It's okay. Plan number two, go and sell it. So you see planning and the prophetic. Planning and the miraculous. They work together. Planning is not devoid of the prophetic. Of the miraculous. It prepares it. In the name of Jesus, as you spend time in planning, may you receive what you are looking for. So I want to talk about expressing planning. How do I plan? And I want to make it simple. How do I plan? This brings us to our text in Joshua chapter 8. How do I plan? I have one, two, three, four steps, four things I think we can do that if you do this every time, the Lord will help you and I. Number one, how do I plan? How do I express planning? You see, I, I like this, I like this um, image on the screen. If you could put it, yeah. I like this image on the screen because it shows you that you already have a target. Okay, you already, so, it, it, you know, they said the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It doesn't mean that planning is a straight line, but you need to plan. plan is, planning is the shortest distance between where you are and where you want to be. Say amen. So what do I do when I want to plan? What do I do? Number one, I set the goal. That is, what is that desirable future? What do you want? What exactly do you want? And this is, you find this in Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. See, now the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Uh, nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you. Arise, go up to Ai. See... I have given the hand, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. Hallelujah. So the goal is very clear. You are going to take Ai. God showed him that is vision, that is goal, that is purpose. Say amen. So it's very, very clear. So that was a clear goal. And how did he get that goal? There was an interaction with God. So that is why I'm saying that you cannot truly plan without God. Hallelujah. So this is activity, Joshua and God, and God giving him a vision. He says, see, I have given you that land. What do you see? See, I have given you Calgary. See, I have given you that. So God planning must always have an involvement with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. At least for this top level, the vision and the goal. And if you don't see a vision, if you don't see... You know, I said, if you, whatever desire you have in your heart that is godly, you know, God also puts those things there. So, I need a set goal. Tell your neighbor, set goal. So, you must have a set goal. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. The Bible says that I have not seen, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 10. Ear have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10. Say, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So, the job of the Holy Spirit is to show you the glorious future you have. It's to show me the glorious future I have. Say, amen. So, you should start thinking of 2022 and I say, Lord, 2022, what should I do? And you, you start praying. Because praying is one of the ways to engage the spirit. You pray in tongues. You worship. You fast. You engage him. You don't just say, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. You engage him. There was an engagement with God. Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Then God said, see, I have given you this. See, it's time for you to get married now. See, it's time for you to... God must be involved. Say amen. Okay. Now, after, after you have seen the goal, you are excited. God wants you to... Uh, Maybe you just woke up one morning and say, oh Lord, help me. I need to be financially independent. I, why? And I was saying, okay, yeah, so that I can, I can serve you some more. And then God just says, start a business. You're excited. You heard God. You, so the vision, the goal is set, start a business. Okay? So let's do, so what's the next step? So I want to start a Strategy. So I must have a set goal. Then I must have a strategy. Strategy is what I call the know-how. The approach and the method. So, if we go back to our text, God says, I have given you this land. That's the vision. That is the goal. But how? So, this is warfare now. So, how? There are many ways they can fight. They can just go straight there and start attacking them. Yes? Yes or no? They can 
form a siege around the city. Yes or no? Yeah, that's, you know, they can form a siege, right? But what did God say? Joshua chapter 8, verse 2. What was the strategy? He said what? Look at it. Joshua chapter 2, verse 8. What was the strategy he gave them? Ambush. Ambush. So, so the goal is to take the city. They are going to fight. But God is saying, don't just rush, start fighting. Here is your strategy. Ambush. So you see the goal, but then you see the strategy. God says you should start a business, but what business? What is the strategy that you're going to use to execute that business in this land? So it's not just enough for me to see this is what God wants me to do. But how? 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 I remember um, when this church was about to start, you know, I um, had a, a, a meeting with... Um, my very good friend, Pastor Wale Akishiku in Toronto. He actually flew down all the way from Toronto, you know, to meet my wife and I. And I was telling, I said, this is what God told me. So I began to talk. I began to talk. You know, after, after the discussion, ah, he said, he said, Pastor Kola, do you know there are very few guys that can take what God has told them and articulate it into how it's going to be done. See, said, that's what you just did. He I was like, oh, okay. I, did, I, I, I was not even really thinking like that. I was just, he said, he said, he said, he said this is so clear. So you, you must not only see or know what you want. You must know how. Because without knowing how, you run into a problem flagged in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The Bible says, the labor of fools weary them. For they don't even know how to go to the city. So they want to go to the city, but they don't know how. So strategy, look at it there. At least three things or four things I can say about this scripture. Number one, strategy makes sure you are not a fool. When you have a strategy about a plan, it ensures that you are not a fool. Number one. Number two, strategy ensures that you maximize your effort. It won't worry you. <laughs> I, I, can I have an amen in the house? It's a little bit quiet here. Shall I prophesy? You get a job tomorrow. You say, amen. I want to show some excitement. This one too is good stuff. Amen. <laughs> hey, strategy ensures that you're not a fool. Strategy ensures that you maximize your effort. Strategy gives you a direction to the city. So nobody is doubting the fact that God has told you that you should get a city, but sir. How? How? So knowing how is as important as what the Lord has shown you. In the name of Jesus, may you receive the know-how. You didn't say amen well. I say in the name of the Lord Jesus, may you receive the know-how. The labor of fools. So they are laboring. But God says every time you are laboring without a direction, it's foolish. You must have a know-how. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive know-how. You see, that's why some people you know. So you know, many times when you know, and that's also the danger about ministry. When people just see, say, "Who is this guy? I can do this thing." God has come into ministry. Yeah, but on that, make, make, you must know how. Otherwise, you soon find out. Oh yeah, it's not as oh you it, it's, see these things. It, it's not as easy as it looks until you begin to do it. How many of you used to look at your parents and you thought that they, your parents, why are they doing like this? Why are they doing like this? Until you became a parent. Then you realize, ah. Then the next time you see your mom, then you greet her very well. Something inside of you begins to say, <laughs> then you begin to wonder, how did they send us to school? How did they pay all those fees? Can I have a witness in the house? The next time when you see your mother, you now you hug her very well. I remember I, I, I saw my mom <laughs> at the... Uh, yeah, I think it was at the redemption camp in, in Nigeria and Africa. You know, I, I was, you know, my family was just, when I saw her, I had a very good appreciation. So I just gave her a hug. You know, she was wondering, oh, what color is so nice today? No, no. Uh, it was realization that was hitting me. Hey, I, I said, oh, mommy, you, you try, you're a good man. I'm like, wow, how did they do it? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive know how. I'm telling you, there's no doubt that God has spoken well of you. I perceive in my spirit that this may be the missing link. 
I, I, I perceive God showed you and told you to come to Canada. I know that. You won't just show up here, but you must know, have the know-how. How do I break through? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I say receive know-how. Nobody is arguing that God didn't tell you to start the business, but there is a know-how. Receive it in Jesus' name. So I set the goal. I have the strategy. Then I must have the steps. I call it the sequence of steps. So these are now the details. The details, okay? So I already have the vision. I have the, the approach, the ambush. Look at then the steps. Joshua chapter 8, verse 3 to 29. So God didn't give Joshua the steps. Joshua came up with the steps. He's the one that selected 30,000 people. He's the one that told them, you stay at the back of the city. In fact, he had two ambushes. He took another 5,000 put on the west. God didn't tell him all of those things. Those are the steps that he came up with. He and the other people now went to the front of the place. He said, okay, we'll go towards the wilderness. God didn't tell him all of that. God just told him, I've given you the city. And God gave him a method. He filled in the blanks. Say amen. May you fill in the blanks. Genesis chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. You see, God do the same for Noah. God gave Noah the architectural plan of the ark. So, so you see, this is why it's good to involve God. God can be involved in the vision, in the goal. God can be involved in the strategy. And God can be involved in the details of the plan itself. First Chronicles 28 when David was about to die, he gave Solomon the plan of the temple. He says, I received it by the hand of the Spirit of God upon me. So it was the Holy Ghost that gave him the details of the plan. That is why. If you are going to express planning, I set goals, I have strategy, I have steps, but I must search, I must engage. You must engage God. You are Alpha. Revelations 1.8 And Omega You must pray and engage Holy Spirit We worship you yeah. Planning without God is pride Are you hearing me? Because you have no clue what is around the next corner. Are you listening to me? Planning without God is, 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 is pomposity. It's arrogance based on nothing. So you, you go before and say, Lord, 2022 is coming. Help me. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You see the end from the beginning. Guide me, O oh Lord. Show me something. You spend some time. Say amen. Say amen. You spend some time. Zakatoli nekeri atakaya badia. You engage God. Tell your neighbor, engage God. You research. You engage men. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. Let me tell you, that thing you want to do, somebody has done it before. You didn't hear what I'm saying. But what I, the folly I see, especially in people, especially all these millennials, they think that uh, the adults, we've not gone, we've done what you have done before. In fact, they know what you are doing. They are just not saying. Hello? I said, we know what you are doing. We, are just, we just ignore you. But we know what you are doing. Because we did it before. See some moves. <laughs> I just laugh. <laughs> uh, me, big daddy. Yeah, you are joking. We know what you are doing. But we just, we just play along. Can I have a witness in the house? Say amen. <laughs> You, you, you go, what you are doing, what you want to do, somebody has done it before. So if I'm going to have a solid plan, wisdom demands that I take from their mistakes and their errors and their wisdom and I put it in my own plan so that my plan is better. Hallelujah. If you don't have anybody in your family, look for somebody else. If you don't have anybody, look for a book. Somebody has done it before. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22. The Bible says, cancel, or rather, without cancel, Plans fail. So, you want to do a plan, you need counsel. Stop reinventing the wheel, thinking you are smart. In fact, reinventing the wheel is proof that you are not very smart. Somebody has gone that way before. Leverage it. I think Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5, the Bible says that wisdom or counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters. 
but a man of understanding would draw it out. Yeah, Proverbs 25. But a man of understanding would draw it out. Even when you meet people, because we want to be sure. I won't just open my hand and start telling you. When people come to meet me, those of them, are, they're not serious. There's no point. Some of them, they've come because they want me to agree with what they want to do. I'll keep quiet. But if you really want it, you wait. Is this person really serious? And you keep them. I remember one, one, uh, one young lady, when she wanted to get married, she was working with me very closely uh, when I was pastoring in Africa. I said, let me tell you. I said, I will tell you what you should do, how you should take care of your husband. I said, I can assure you, nobody will tell you this. He said, Pastor, tell me. I sat her down in church. I said, this is how to handle a man. I said, anybody, have you heard that? Before? I said, I've never heard of this. I said, go and do it to him. The husband testified after he said, Pastor, your daughter is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, I intend to also tell my biological daughters, just follow my prescription. There's nothing you want to do that somebody has not done before. And you can take from their own errors and build on your own so that you, you go faster. Say amen. The, Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. It says, I understood by books. So, yeah, he was talking about scripture here, but also books. There are books. You read it, you research it. You can have a profitable business here in Calgary. Or that one that you wake up at 5 a.m., you know, you're saying yes, sir, yes, sir, to the people that you, you left school 20 years. When you left school 20 years ago, they were still in, her, in grade three. They call your name. <laughs> Hello? Hello? There's something you can do and free yourself from that drama here in this land. Then when you come to church, the pastor says, hey, pastor, greet me well. But that 20-year-old boy that is terrorizing you in the office. And you say, hello, 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 hello. My, my boss is calling me. I can't come to church. My boss is calling me. 20-year-old. May the Lord deliver you. You're not saying amen. amen. These people here, they, okay, let me come here. May the Lord deliver you. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Then you think, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. The Bible says, we have the mind of Christ. Think. Tell your neighbor, think for a change. I've got the light of God in me. Come on, sit down and think. I've got the light of God in me. I have the mind of Christ. I have the spirit of the Son of God. Sit down and think. Are you hearing me? So you engage God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. You engage man. Cancel. Take cancel. Take cancel. Read books. Do whatever you need to add to yourself. Then you have to engage the mind that you have. You are not stupid. Listen to me now. There is, there is a trick in this land. Listen carefully. I will say some things here. I have seen it. Don't let anybody make you second guess yourself. Are you hearing me? And, and, I, and I will keep telling you people. When you put your children in schools, this is not heaven. Put I. Hello? Follow through. Don't be saying, I put I in a, in a, in a Christian school. And uh, Christian school, that 70% of them don't believe that Jesus is the only way. Put I. Talk to your children. You are smart. Are you hearing me? Tell them you are very smart. You see, your father is not dull. So how can you be dull? So if the teacher is saying you are dull, the teacher is dull. It's not possible. I gave birth to you. So, so you have it in the inside. The teacher is mistaken. You talk to them because there's a strategy in this place. Sometimes they want you to second guess yourself. They want the children to second guess themselves. They want them to feel as if they are not capable. You have come too late. My mother told me I'm very smart. And I believe my mother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. You can't. You can. Ah. Time will fail me. She pumped me up so much. There was a time I didn't care. Bring that math question from anywhere. Something in me say, ah, you fix it. I said, bring it. Uh, Lacombe, whatever, Durel, just bring it. You don't understand. You don't know those books, right? <laughs> you must, listen, you will have the mind of Christ. You can do anything you want to do. Any teacher that tells your child that she can, that teacher is sick. And you don't, 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 you just stop focus on your child. Put hand and prophesy. We have the mind of Christ. How can you tell me I'm, I'm the smartest thing you ever see? 
Why? The spirit of Christ is in me. You can call it pride. That's your problem. But I won't let you put me under. He that, he that sent me says, I'll be head first, high above. Come on, let somebody shout hallelujah. So sometimes you wonder, you say, okay, okay, okay. Why then is it that some plans don't work? Hmm? I want to, you know, for the remaining time I have, I want to talk about the energy. What is it that, you, I'm sure you've seen some people, they, they start the plan, but something happens, then it drops. Why doesn't it work? Let me tell you, this is the energy that drives planning. Is the why. Why do you want to start a business? Why do you want to go do you want to go to school? What is the why? Listen to me. The stronger the why, the stronger the energy you have to finish it. You didn't hear what I'm saying. The stronger your reason for the plan, the more passion and energy you have to see it through. In fact, I think there's a real life story. I've forgotten the boxer now. There's a real life story of a boxer. Uh, I've forgotten his name. He was fighting a championship match. I think his mother died before that match. And before the mother died, I think he had promised his mom that, don't worry, mom. You know, you know he didn't want the woman to die, right? He said, mom, don't worry, I'll win this belt for you. So the woman died. So they had beaten him to stupor. He was about to give up. Then he remembered that I said I will give this thing to my mother. He stood up. The opponent said, when this guy stood up, it's as if all his energy went, left him. Because that guy was not supposed to stand up again. But there was a why. There was a why. See, they look at you and they don't understand your passion. You don't know where I'm coming from. Who, you can, there is nothing you can do. There's a why. It's strong. Are you, I, that's why I tell you people, you left that far place here and you don't have a why. May the Lord deliver you. Nothing, not, see, when he got up, he won that match. And they were wondering, I said, what happened to you? He said, he was, he was surprised. He didn't expect him to get up. He didn't expect him to get up. So as the guy got up, all his own, all his own energy left him. I see you arise in the name of Jesus. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, Jesus did the same thing. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. No, he, 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 said, he said, for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. He had a why. The why was strong. Why would God become man and die that horrible death? There was something. There was a strong reason. The joy. I can give you three. The joy of redeeming man. Mark 8.36. The value of a soul. So he would not have many souls. That was a driver. The joy of a name. Philippians 2. 9-11. to God gave him a name that is above all names. And the joy of destroying the works of the devil. First John 3, 8. So those are enough incentives so that when he was about to give up and he remembered the why, he went through it. May your why be strong. Why are you going for a master's? Because my daddy said so. That's not a strong why. Why do you want to, why, okay, why do you want to have a child? Ah, because my in-laws are disturbing me. That's, that's not a strong why. Are you listening to me? Why do you want to get married? Ah, everybody is getting married. It is not a strong why. Why do you want to start a business? Ah, so I can have some change. That's not a strong why. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive a strong why. Look at Joshua had a strong why. They had lost that battle before. Look at Joshua chapter 7 verse 8 to 9. When Joshua was talking to God, say, ha, if we don't win this battle, we are as good as dead. What are we going to say? Put it together. What are we going to say when the Canaanites are here? They will kill all of us. They will wipe us. So he had a strong way to survive. I can't come that far and fail. It is not possible. This, the why is strong. Anything I have to do. Why do you want to study that course? Because my daddy pushed me. Or my mother said so. That's not a strong why. In the name of Jesus, receive a strong purpose. The only reason we are doing this church something is because God said so. That's also a strong why. Because in Joshua chapter 8 verse 1, God told him, go take I. So one, for Joshua, why was his why very strong? He had to survive. 
If they lost that battle, they were good as dead. Why was his passion very heavy to execute the plan? God said so. I've given it to you. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me give you a, a real life story, a personal story. My younger brother. We are six of us, five boys, one girl, and I'm the first. My younger brother, the guy right next to me, Ola. When we were growing up, my dad, professor, mom, professor, but my brother, his grades were always very interesting. If there are 40 people in the class, his position would be 39. He, he, he knew how to beat the last one. I, I'm serious. If there are 100 people, my brother would be like 99. It was a concern to my mom. Your parents are smart. What, what is this? This is not... And my brother struggled. God help me. You know, I would look at him. You know, he struggled all through... Um, what do you call that? Grade 6? What do you call that? Elementary? High school? But for the fact that my mom was a teacher... I don't think my brother will have finished. If there's this final exam you take to get into the university, uh, I think they call it, uh, some, some of you seem to know it, but there's this exam, what they call it here? That uh, provincial exam, right? So the equivalent is called, uh, mm -hmm. so if you don't pass, you can't go into the university. I remember, I can still sit right now. My mom will sit with my brother. All through the night, be teaching him, be teaching him. And I'm listening to what they're teaching. I'm like, ah, come on. Allah. I will feel so sorry for him. I feel so sorry for my mom. But my mom didn't give up. He got into the university. I was already in the university. And I would be playing all around. That's why if you follow me, you fail. Playing all around. Oh, yeah. They found, they found out in the university. I play. But once it's two weeks to the exam, I would just switch mode. You won't see me again. <laughs> because I can't carry failure to my mother. Ah, I can't. So I will, I will just switch mood. And my brother, we are all concerned. But he began to pick up. He began to pick In fact, he started telling me, he would tell me, okay, aren't we going to the library? Ah, I look at him. Library, you are telling me about library. Cut the long story short. He survived. But something clicked in the university. Something clicked. He, he, God has blessed him. Very successful right now. In fact, he has PhD. He's now an adjunct professor in the University of Queens in Ontario. <laughs> Me, I'm preaching. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say amen. He used to boast about me to his friends. Say, how about your brother? That your smart brother. Say, oh, yeah, yeah, he's fine. He has PhD. His career, you know. So of recent, him and my mom started talking. Listen now, this is where I'm going. You must cut this. So my mom said, so you mean you could be this smart? What was wrong in those days? Here now, over almost 50 years of wisdom. He said, mommy, honestly, I didn't understand why I should study. He said, mommy, I really didn't. He said, mommy, if you had put your energy in making me understand why, he said, when I now understood why, that, ah, oh, I need this thing for my life to be successful. I need this thing. He said, once I understood the why, then it made sense. You're shouting on those children. Tell them why. If you don't go to school now, when I go, this land is not easy for your, your kind of completion. You need a profession that will be begging you. I've told you, if it's not because I was in engineering, I would have done medicine. I will go back here, I will be a neurosurgeon, I will be a gynecologist, I will be everything. Yeah. It's a no-brainer for me. Your why must be strong. Let me tell you, don't think you marry a rich man, then that makes you rich. That's another sermon. So I don't want to go there. I will come back and visit you. <laughs> May you have a strong why. Rise up on your feet. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. Shakabra de shakaba. Go ahead. Say a word of prayer. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. Zayi katayala. Lord, help me. Help me understand. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, I need you. 
Is somebody praying? Say, Lord, help me. Show me my future. Show me the vision for 2022. Lord, show me the strategy. There is a strategy for what you want to do. There is a strategy. Say, Lord, show me. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Somebody has done what you want to do. Say, Lord, help me. Guide me. Come on, let somebody pray. Say, Lord, help me. Show me the steps. You want to get married? There's a way. There's a way to do it. You want to start a business? There's a way. Say, Lord, I need speed. But remember, the shortest distance between where you are and the future you desire is planning. Come on, let somebody pray. Say, God, help me. Zabakatayaba. Your wife can be pushing you every time. Honey, honey, get up from the bed. You need a strong wife to get up from that bed. Your wife, every time. Honey, honey. And you're sleeping. You sleep from 5 a.m. You sleep. Honey. Say, Lord, refire me. Say, Lord, set me on fire. Mabrakatoshi karanto zakata. Let somebody pray. Kazizu katuya katoya katai naka. Hey. Mazaki tu pai katalia. Reven all my days. Go ahead and say a word of prayer. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. Mazika tali atos. Mazaka bayakaboska ita. Leika taina. Come ahead, say ahead. Say, Lord, show me the plan. Show me the strategy. Show me the vision. Lord, help me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say amen. We have a template in the church for planning. If you don't have it, just send an email to church office. Say, I want that template for planning that pastor talked about. They will send it to you. With smart goals, all of those things. But I've given you the high level. Spend some time. Pray. Have a plan. Put it on your wall. May the Lord help you and I in the name of Jesus.